Good morning. This is the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission Wednesday business meeting for March 29th. We will start with a roll call. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Ackerman? Here. Commissioner Cross? Present. Commissioner McGowan? Here. Commissioner Mesner? Here. Commissioner Ray? Here. Commissioner Oath? Commissioner Robbins? Here. We have six out of seven present, Mr. Chair. Very good. Uh, well, good to see everybody. Um, good to appear. We start on our next agenda item, which is commissioner comments. Does any commissioner have comments? All right, seeing none, we will move to consent agenda. Uh, does any commissioner have questions with regard to the consent agenda that is presented to us? Seeing no questions, do we have a motion to approve consent? So moved. Second. Motion from Commissioner Cross, second from Commissioner Messner to approve consent. Is there further discussion on consent? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. Moving right along, we will move to docket 2210002 an oil and gas development plan application by GMT Exploration Company. We will bring the relevant parties to the panel. And I believe we start by hearing from Mark Dittenreiter from Albert County. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, good to see you again this week. I'm Mark Dittenreiter, Director of Community and Economic Development for Elbert County government. Uh, my comments today are going to be similar to what I shared with you the last hearing uh, for GMT's Simmer Cinnamon project. Uh, like the cinnamon, uh, we are aware of the ragged project and uh, GMT has consulted with us on it. Uh, the location of the ragged is not in conflict with any known county plans or any type of pending developments. Um, as a refresher, we do not regulate the siting of oil and gas operations in Elbert County. We waive that authority, although we do have oil and gas permits. And for each well, we require a specific drilling permit. And then we also require a grading permit for the location and also for the access road. And this all comes, of course, after uh, you uh, approve the site. Um, we have a master road use agreement in place between the county and GMT, and this further addresses traffic and uh, road infrastructure type needs. Uh, the haul route that GMT will be using is authorized by that master road use agreement. Uh, the, the history, the county has, uh, uh, you know, been working with GMT. Uh, I, I would say it's it's been all exemplary. Uh, that relationship, there's always been uh, really good close communication. Uh, the wells that GMT has drilled thus far in the county have all gone according to plan. Uh, there haven't been any issues at all with those. So I'm I'm certainly confident that GMT will secure those required county permits after. Uh, the COGCC permits are approved. And once again, like I mentioned last week, the economic benefit to Elbert County is quite significant uh, with GMT's presence operating in our county. So all in all, uh, to conclude, I'd say Elbert County is definitely in support of the ragged location and development plan that they are proposing. Great, thank you very much. Do commissioners have questions uh, for the panel? Commissioner Messner. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Denton Ryder, for being here and presenting with us today. It's always good to have the local government's perspective. <clears throat> and I understand that you've been in communication with the operator and um, you know have entered into a master road use agreement and. I guess I wanted to just pick your brain a little bit on the county's perspective around, um, you know, now we've got two developments um, uh, up to 30 wells. Should this um, should this development be approved without any oil or produced water takeaway associated with it? 
um, which is a pretty significant amount of truck traffic and, um, and, and a little unusual for this size of development to have that level of truck traffic associated with it. And uh, is there an expectation from the county that the operator um, diligently explore oil takeaway versus trucking it uh, in these locations or further development in Elbert County? And, and uh, Mr. Commissioner Messner, um, as far as the oil takeaway piece, could you elaborate on that? Speaking a, a little uh, out of out of my vernacular. Well, oil takeaway being piping the oil off site, right? And so to a, yes. to a midstream transmission line of some sort, um, you know, oil takeaway utilizing trucks um, for oil volumes like this is a pretty significant amount of trucks on a daily basis that are going to be in this area. Um, and while at least in the previous application, uh, the operator had indicated that they would they would explore the option um, for oil pipeline takeaway, um, that's not being proposed in the application. And I wanted to make sure that Elbert County understood that and the amount of trucks that are going to be associated with up to 30 wells on two different paths. Yes. yes. Yep. We have uh, our public works director, uh, who obviously manages uh, the, the roads in the county, uh, has been in direct contact uh, with GMT along the way. Of course, with the you know the, the previous history that GMT has in the county over the past couple of years, and uh, there there's a comfort level there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, very good. Um, Good to get the local government's perspective on that issue, um, important to our consideration. Any further questions, comments? All right, seeing none, uh, Mr. Dettenreiter, um, we will um, allow you to be around and listen in, and we will now hear from the applicant. Wonderful, thank you. Well, good morning, Chair, Commissioners, Council, and members of the public. My name is Jamie Jost of Jost Energy Law, and I, along with my partner, Kelsey Wazelinki, represent GMT Exploration Company, LLC, on the RAGGED OGDP application before you today. First off, GMT would like to say a sincere thank you to Commission staff and the Director for their open communication and their hard work on the RAGGED OGDP application, and we look forward to presenting to you today. Um, before I get going, I'm going to ask Mr. Trevor Smith to share our slideshow. So Trevor, if you're able to pull that up and then hit slide two, that would be excellent. Can everyone see that? Yes, we've got it, Trevor. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. So in support of the commission's preference to utilize a multi-well pad for oil and gas development, the RAGGED OGDP application seeks approval of a 3,247 acre OGDP that will utilize one new oil and gas location for the development of up to 20 horizontal wells to develop, operate, and produce the Niobrara formation from one new joint and spacing unit. The RAGGED OGDP and the oil and gas location is expressly supported by Elbert County, which you just heard, and does not meet any Rule 304B criteria. Therefore, it did not require an alternative location analysis. GMT has been in close communication and consultation with Elbert County throughout the OGDP process and will obtain an oil and gas drilling permit and a local grading permit for the proposed location and access road from Elbert County should the commission approve this OGDP. As part of the RAGGED OGDP, GMT is committed to numerous BMPs to avoid, minimize, and mitigate potential adverse impacts, which GMT will address today. And finally, GMT has complied with all notice requirements for the RAGGED OGDP and no formal petitions were filed. After your review of the application and the testimony presented today, GMT respectfully requests that this commission approve the OGDP for the proposed development. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hans Schuster, DJ Basin Land Manager for GMT to continue our presentation. Next slide. Good morning, commissioners. It's nice to see you guys again. My name is Hans Schuster, and I'm the DJ Basin Land Manager for GMT Exploration Company, LLC. I, along with Max Blair, appreciate the opportunity to present the RAGGED OGDP, OGDP to you today. Similar to what you heard from GMT last week during the Cinnamon OGDP hearing, we will present a variety of topics to you regarding the RAGGED OGDP and seek your approval of this application today. 
GMT sincerely thanks Elbert County for attending this hearing and providing comments in support of this development plan. GMT appreciates the partnership with Elbert County and looks forward to continuing the work of their team as our development progresses. Next slide, please. This slide is similar to the slide I presented last week, so I'll not go into detailed background of GMT. However, I did want to note again that we have other GMT representatives available for questions if necessary during the hearing. Next slide, please. The Ragged Oil and Gas location is centrally located in the 3,247 acre drilling and spacing unit and will be used to develop 20 horizontal wells for the development of the Niobrara Formation. The Ragged location is not within the ozone non-attainment area and did not meet any Rule 304B2 criteria. There are no residential building units or schools within 2,000 feet of the oil and gas location, and the closest residential building unit is 2,840 feet to the west. The nearest residential neighborhood is greater than 7,920 feet from the oil and gas location. The location is not within high priority habitat. GMT has a surface use agreement with the surface owner and has consulted with Elbert County about obtaining a commercial grading permit, a commercial access driveway permit, and an oil and or gas operations permit from Elbert County to develop the wells from the proposed ragged location. The cultural features map shown on this slide illustrates the very rural nature of this area of Elbert County. The surface location is zoned rangeland with a current use as agricultural wage land. I will now turn the presentation over to Mr. Maxwell Blair. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Excellent. All right. Could I have the next slide, please? Uh, good morning, commissioners. It's very nice to see you again this morning. I'm um, glad to be here to talk about our RAGED project. Uh, we're going to cover the permitting timeline uh, in a little more detail. I'll take you through several slides regarding our permitting and our development plans. Uh, GMT is eager to start development on the RAGED location, and we appreciate the work of COGCC staff and the on the OGDP application, and we appreciate your time this morning. Uh, we received the director's recommendation for approval on March 20th, 2023. As you can see on this slide, uh, we've engaged in a pre-application consultation with Elbert County back in February of 2022. We filed our OGDP in October of 22. Uh, we reached completeness in January of 23, and the required seven-day completeness notice letter and notice of hearing uh, were mailed by our our council on January 19th. We did not receive any public comments or petitions on this OGDP, which led to our hearing today. Next slide, please. Uh, with regard to uh, Elbert County as the relevant local government, as you heard earlier from, uh, from Mark, on November 3rd of 2022, the Elbert County Commissioner submitted a public comment letter in support of the ragged OGDP to the commission. GMT's had several conversations with Elbert County Public Works, Community and Development Services, and the Rattlesnake Fire Department about our development plans and specifically about the Ragged location. Elbert County recognized GMT's dedication to ensuring that the Ragged location would minimize and mitigate impacts on current land use when we located this site more than 2,000 feet from any existing home, as well as GMT's diligent actions to mitigate noise and dust. GMT and Elbert County Public Works have also entered into agreements regarding truck haul routes and maintenance, which I will address in a few minutes on a, on a slide further down. GMT will obtain a local drilling permit for each well and a local grading permit for the proposed location and access road after COGCC approval is granted to this OGDP. And we'll continue to maintain our master road use agreement with the county to uh, further address traffic and road infrastructure needs at the county level. Next slide, please. Uh, let's review some of the phases of operation and our schedule. If we receive approval from for this OGDP application, GMT will submit the corresponding form twos for the ragged location and also plans to commence construction of the well pad and access road in May of 2023. This construction will include both the pad location and the production facility construction. Once we receive the approved form twos for the ragged OGDP, GMT intends to start drilling operations 
in July of 2023 with completions in August of 2023 and first production in October of 2023. As you can see, we have a very aggressive timeline to get the project started and the wells online in this calendar year. Uh, interim reclamation is also expected to start in February of 2024. Elbert County is aware of our 2023 development schedule, and we will continue to work with them to ensure we have the necessary county permits in place for the ragged location. Next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about takeaway and trucking. Once saleable gas is encountered, uh, the gas will be direct, directed to the sales pipeline. This pipeline has been constructed uh, adjacent to the ragged location. You can see it on the map here in yellow. Um, and so the connection of that line will be quite short. Uh, however, due to the exploratory nature of this development, the oil and produced water will be stored on site and we trucked off location daily. The haul route in this case from the ragged goes north to County Road 194. Uh, which is covered under our master road use agreement with Albert County. Um, GMT will utilize uh, these haul routes, and we've sent notice to all interested parties uh, to the OGDP application in our certified completeness mailings. Um, I will take a moment here to address some commissioner questions regarding oil takeaway. Uh, we had them last week for Cinnamon and heard them again today from Commissioner Messner. Thank you for those questions. Um, the, the answers are gonna be very similar for Ragged as they were for Cinnamon. Uh, we are still in an exploratory phase here. We're evaluating options for future oil takeaway. Uh, and we hope to be able to, to reduce or eliminate trucking of oil from this, these sites um, as our development continues. Uh, however, we need to see consistent, predictable well results, um, and that's it's impossible to commit the, the capital uh, to that infrastructure investment until we see those. Um, and as a reminder, we brought the first horizontal well on in this region just um, about 15 months ago in October of 2021. Uh, we're the sole operator in this area of just five horizontal wells. Uh, and, and one of the reasons this area has not been developed up to this point is a, a severe lack of infrastructure. Um, we're at this extreme southern end of the Niobrara productive interval, uh, and, and we do see these wells as exploratory. Uh, but we do hope that uh, the results of this 2023 and 2024 drilling program will uh, support that uh, pipeline infrastructure investment. Next slide, please. Best management practices for construction. We're going to uh, utilize a combination of waddles and ditches around the perimeter of the site, site in down sloping areas prior to engaging in any earth disturbing activities. Um, the, all of this will be done in compliance with the state CDPHE stormwater permit, all COGCC stormwater requirements and local grading permit, which has stormwater requirements as well. Uh, the location will comply with statewide wildlife protection requirements of Rule 1202.A3, and GMT will not locate any staging, refueling, or chemical storage within 500 feet of the ordinary high water mark of any river, perennial, or intermittent stream, lake, pond, or wetland. Um, for the ragged, the access road is very short, and it will be gravel to meet county standards, and we'll be paving the, the first 100 feet or so of the driveway where it meets the county road to... Uh, help control any mud that might be tracked onto that road. Uh, diversion ditches will be used for all stormwater control. Next slide, please. Uh, for drilling and completion BMPs, we will be drilling this these wells with a diesel powered rig. Um, GMT has committed to using water-based mud for all surface holes then switching to a type two oil-based mud for the laterals. Uh, all drill cuttings will be stored in closed containers on location, will be trucked to a commercial disposal facility. Continuous monitoring will be used to track fluid volumes and monitor for leaks. A closed loop system will be used. Fluid storage tanks on location will be equipped with visual level indicators that are inspected by operation personnel. Uh, GMT has contracted with Liberty to use their quiet fleet for all completions on this site. And permanent lighting will not shine above the horizontal plane passing through the center point of the light source or shine beyond the boundary of the working pad surface. Um, I believe we had a, a question regarding um, 
the drilling occupations on this well, we're, we're planning on drilling 20 wells from this pad. Um, and I, I just want to reiterate that, that this is still considered an exploratory area. We've taken the permitting approach that contemplates our full development potential, even though the viability of this development is still uncertain. It would be irresponsible for GMT to fully develop all 20 wells at this stage in the development. We must evaluate the reservoir first. And then trying to balance that with um, sharing with the commission and, and the public our, our full development plans here, rather than um, permit just uh, one well or a few. Few We wanted to show the, the full plan of potentially 20 wells, but, but it's too soon to commit to that, in our opinion. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, BMPs for production. Um, we will have uh, PVT alarms, pressure, volume, temperature alarms, automation, and other sensory monitoring devices will be used to monitor active tank levels at all times. During any transfer operations, visual inspections from inlet and outlet vessels with radio communication will be implemented. Daily visual inspections will be performed on all equipment, hoses, and valving to ensure integrity, integrity of fluid containment at all times. Secondary containment devices will be constructed around crude oil condensate and produced water storage tanks and will enclose an area sufficient to contain and provide secondary containment for 150% of the largest single tank. Secondary containment devices will be inspected at the same time as stormwater inspections with personnel on location. Daily inspections will occur. Um, I believe we had a follow-up question regarding um, emissions calculations on our form 2B. And I, I'm here to provide an update. We have rerun uh, and, and prepared a revised form for cinnamon, which we discussed last week. With regard to the ragged form 2B, we didn't find any clerical errors on that form. Um, next slide, please. Uh, community outreach, I believe we discussed this in, in some detail uh, for the cinnamon hearing. Many of these answers are the same as well, um, but we, we have engaged with the surface owner and nearby homeowners. We have a surface agreement for the ragged location, and we've been in contact uh, on multiple occasions with the farming tenant on this property. We have a very good working relationship there. Uh, we've had substantial engagement with the broader Elbert County community uh, regarding this location and other development plans in the area. Um, and we've engaged with Elbert County um, itself on multiple occasions. I won't cover the photographs here, um, but I do want to um, add that uh, we heard uh, questions about our engagement, um, and we have engaged with Elbert County uh, since uh, last week at our cinnamon hearing uh, to request a mailing list. Uh, that's the process at Elbert County. Uh, we, they provide what's called a radius report. Um, so we've requested a radius report to be prepared for uh, all properties within a half mile of both the cinnamon and ragged locations and all properties within a quarter mile of our haul routes being used for these projects. And we've prepared a mailing that will be going out on a voluntary basis to all of those residents to inform them of our schedule and ensure they have a means of contacting GMT should they have any questions. Um, with that, I'll hand it over um, back to, to Hans to cover the next slide. Thank you, Max. Next slide, please. GMT submitted detailed land testimony and exhibits illustrating that GMT has substantial leasehold interest in the proposed 3,247-acre drilling and spacing unit for the application lands for the development and operation of 20 horizontal wells in the Niobrara Formation. GMT submitted detailed land testimony and exhibits illustrating that GMT has a majority leasehold interest in the proposed drilling and spacing unit for the development and operation of 20 horizontal wells. In addition, COGCC staff indicated in the director recommendation that staff appreciates the utilization of a single large DSU for these application lands, eliminating the need for multiple individual well bore spacing units. GMT intends for 10 wells to be drilled in a west to east orientation and 10 wells to be drilled in an east to west orientation. Next slide, please. GMT submitted detailed geologic testimony and exhibits submitted in support of the OGDP application. The geology exhibits show that the Niobrara formation is present throughout the application lands as an approximate 
is approximately 325 to 375 feet thick and is both a hydrocarbon source rock and a reservoir. Next slide, please. And finally, GMT submitted detailed engineering testimony and exhibits to support the OGDP application. The engineering testimony confirmed that the drainage area for an average horizontal Niobrara formation well with a lateral length of 12,137 feet is estimated at 115 acres. The average drainage distance equidistant from the horizontal well bore is estimated to extend 201 feet. Thus, an approximate 3,247 acre drilling and spacing unit is therefore not less than the maximum area that can be efficiently, economically, and effectively drained by 20 horizontal wells producing oil, gas, and associated hydrocarbons from the Niagara Formation. The engineering testimony also showed that the average drainage radius will not extend beyond the requested subsurface setbacks, thereby preventing waste and pro protecting correlative rights. The engineering testimony further showed that the horizontal wells drilled in the Niagara Formation would be economic. I will now turn it over to Ms. Jost to conclude the presentation. Thank you again for your time and consideration in this matter. Great, thank you, Mr. Schuster. And if I may, Mr. Blair, can you come up on the screen? Um, we do have one additional commissioner question that we received that we'd like to hit on. Um, Mr. Blair, can you please talk about whether the site would be considered for electrification in the future? Yeah, thank you, Ms. Jost. Uh, I meant to uh, cover that in my earlier presentation, but uh, the answer, again, is similar to that of the Cinnamon. We have been in contact with CORE, the local electric co-op. Uh, we've had numerous discussions with them. Infrastructure, their electric infrastructure in the area is limited. Uh, and we do have a request in to bring electric power to this site, although the timeline is, is probably a year or longer before that power will be available and can be constructed. Um, so that that is in the works, and we will file the appropriate uh, amendments with the commission for any equipment that would change as a result of bringing electric power to that site. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, next slide, please, Mr. Smith. Okay. Well, to summarize the ragged OGDP and GMT's request for approval, we would note the following highlights. Elbert County was consulted and supports GMT's development for the OGDP. The OGDP provides substantial protections of public health, safety, welfare, the environment, and wildlife resources by citing outside of sensitive receptors and the best management practices avoid, minimize, and mitigate potential temporary impacts. Per the director recommendation, the staff concluded that the proposed site-specific BMPs will adequately minimize and mitigate potential adverse impacts. And then finally, the director recommendation concluded that the um, OGDP does not anticipate and the staff does not anticipate any significant potential direct adverse impacts to public health, safety, welfare, the environment, or wildlife resources. Next slide, please. We thank you for, GM, for hearing GMT's presentation and testimony today. This final slide shows the requested relief for the ragged OGDP, and GMT respectfully requests approval of the OGDP and the associated drilling and spacing unit. With that, we'll conclude our presentation, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. And Mr. Thank Smith. You. Sorry, I was going to have him stop screen sharing, Chair. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Awesome. Okay. Um, with that, uh, does any commissioner have questions? Commissioner McGowan? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you for the presentation today. Um, I'm wondering, related to slide nine and the exploratory nature of the field that you're in. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, how many locations your company currently is drilling on, how many total wells, and what the production currently looks like. And at what point do we decide this is no longer exploratory, but this is actually a developed field that has minerals that um, we would no longer say, well, this is exploratory, so I'm gonna do one and then nine and 10 and then 10. 10 wells does not feel exploratory to me. One feels exploratory. I don't know what's here. I'm gonna test it out. 10 feels like I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be developing minerals. That's a significant investment. And so I'm, I'm not sure I'm understanding 10 and then I'm gonna come back and do 10 and this is exploratory. So I, I think I would appreciate maybe a little more insight from you all. Uh, thank you for the questioner, Commissioner McGowan, the question, Commissioner McGowan. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, 
I'll try to address that. There sounds like there are multiple questions in there, um, and I may lean on some of the panelists. Uh, but but I, I I understand the question, and and uh, I, I don't know that uh, there is a, an exact answer to that question about when uh, development moves from exploratory to um, to appraising to full development. I, I do know that we're not there yet. Uh, GMT has drilled. Uh, and produced five horizontal wells in the area across roughly 10 or 15,000 acres of uh, uh, development area in Elbert County. Um, we currently have a rig operating on an existing site called the Vulcan, um, and we are drilling four additional wells from that site. Um, that, that current project is designed to, again, test the reservoir and test that ultimate um, spacing of these wells across each of the DSUs that have been designated. Uh, the cinnamon and ragged are both part of this um, appraisal program that we have, and uh, and we will drill those in 2023 um, uh, individual wells on on each of those locations. Um, they the the gas pipeline is in place now, so it allows us to produce these wells effectively and test um, the reservoir without uh, contributing significantly to emissions. The first well drilled here, there was no pipeline available. It was on the Vulcan pad and we had to seek a variance for, um, uh, for a combustor for a reservoir test. But that's no longer the case. We have a pipeline now to, um, to sell all that produced gas. Um, so we are, we are quite hopeful that um, 2023 drilling program will reveal a lot more information about this reservoir uh, and enable us to um, engage in not just the planning for more infrastructure, which, which has been taking place on our end, but the investment in that. Um, but I, as you might uh, already know, uh, oil infrastructure is, is uh, very challenging, requires a lot of engineering planning rights away um, and a connection to the market and uh, without going into all the details we are working on those those challenges uh, but but they have not all yet been solved you're muted sorry thank you um i so could you also address why 10 wells is considered exploratory i'm just used to someone saying we're going to drill this one well to see what's there and then that that will determine how many more we are going to do 10 to me seems like you know there's something there and it's going to be successful. And so I, I, I kind of would like some more information about that because I feel like, again, we, we talked about this with the cinnamon, right? You're gonna be coming back and disturbing again. Are you gonna need a variance from interim, interim reclamation? What's the timing of the second 10 wells? Um, you know, I realize that this isn't designated as priority habitat right now, but I know that you know every year or every cycle um, Division of Wildlife is updating those maps. And so I just trying to figure out kind of this re-disturbance, you know, that we keep talking about and and your 10 wells. Yes, I, I, I understand the question. Um, so we have a total of 20 wells planned for the ragged site, developing roughly five square miles of lands. Uh, our budget and plan for 2023 is to drill six wells from the ragged pad, uh, evenly spaced across uh, the unit, uh, a portion of the unit, again, to test uh, ultimate spacing of full development of this, this area. Okay, uh, thank you. Could you, um, I don't know if you saw the letter from, I can't remember his name, representing some of some royalty um, owners and their concern about fully developing their mineral interests. For, for that, I'm gonna pass it back to uh, Jamie. She's got um, the details on that. Yes, Ms. thank Joseph. you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no worries, call me whatever. <laughs> um, thank you for the question, Commissioner. Um, we were in immediate contact once we saw Mr. Geyer's um, comment letter submitted yesterday. Um, he did have some questions that about his clients that are leased royalty interest owners. So they um, do hold a valid lease um, with respect to the development in this unit. Um, it seemed that their question was more about kind of <clears throat> where the well would be producing. And there may have been a misunderstanding that they weren't going to be paid on any well unless it produced their acreage. Whereas on the unit basis, 
any well that will be developed within this proposed drilling and spacing unit, they will receive their proportionate share of royalties from the wells. And so whether it's one or whether it's 20, um, they will receive their proportionate share. And I think that was part of the misunderstanding about what um, my understanding was in the communications with Mr. Geyer. And we did have several emails, including with the commission hearing officer, Mr. Berman, about that. And I think we've kind of put the questions to rest. <laughs> Thank you, that's helpful. I'm glad that you followed up. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions for the panel, Commissioner Messner? Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thank you for the presentation. Um, just a just a couple of questions. Um, the first one is, I I guess, to be transparent uh, and and to ensure there's transparency here, I feel like the number of wells being drilled is a little bit of a moving target. And so I I just heard Mr. Blair indicate that there's going to be six wells initially drilled on this. I think in the director's recommendation, it indicated that there was going to be ten wells that were initially drilled. And so, so I understand, and I understand the development timeline associated with this. There will be six wells that will be drilled off of this site within the first year, as indicated by the development plan on your site. And then the additional 14 wells will be developed at some point in the future. Would it be uh, individual wells, you know, a couple of wells at a time? Would it be the remaining 14 wells? I mean, what are we looking at here for a development timeline? Because it seems to be a moving target. I uh, appreciate the question and, and um, we hope, we intend to be transparent here and, and hope we are, hope we see it, we appear to be, uh, all cases. Um, so the first question, um, six is the answer for 2023. That's what we have budget for and, and uh, and that is our plan. The remaining 14 that we're seeking uh, permits for today, uh, I cannot answer when those will be drilled or how many of those 14 will be drilled. That is part of our uh, assessment of the reservoir uh, to under understand what the, what the right um, and responsible approach to developing is from a, from, um, a, uh, a capital investment perspective, reservoir drainage perspective, uh, royalty and relative rights perspective. That's our responsibility as the operator to to find the most efficient, responsible way to develop uh, this drill space unit and the surrounding area. Um, so when those 14 wells are drilled in the future uh, will be determined to some degree by the results of these first six. Okay, so say this, the first six are successful. It's what you had hoped. Um, my question, I think, is does then the other 14 get developed as one shot if the first six are successful, or are you going to do onesies and twosies for the next 20 years um, in order to fully um, complete your, your OGDP proposal here? Yes, that that's correct. Um... A lot of the the reoccupation comes from you know competing contractual obligations throughout the field, capital availability. You know, it's our intent to come in, occupy the pad one time, drill the initial six wells, and come back, finish out the unit upon return. There's no intention to return multiple times after the initial occupation. So that that's our plan. And it falls into a larger drilling schedule that, you know, has a lot of logistics associated with it. So um, you know, we have other paths down to the southwest, and you know, when the time comes, we 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 shall only return one time. Okay, that's helpful. Now, I I see that Arapaho County is the proximate local government um, associated with this, and I think if I understand correctly, it's at about well, it's it's pretty close the boundary to this pad. <clears throat> are any of the haul routes that are being contemplated for this? um going through Arapahoe County and what kind of interaction have you had with Arapahoe County on this application? Uh, I'll address that question, Commissioner Messner. Thank you. Um, I have been in close communication with Arapahoe County throughout this whole development process. I have uh, very good working relationships there and um, they are aware of the ragged pad. They were provided notice uh, under the commission rules for 
uh, proximate local government, uh, but, but the communications go far beyond those minimum requirements. Uh, with regard to haul routes, we've had that discussion on a number of occasions. Their policy is they require um, a, a road use impact fee and agreement of some type for wells permitted within the county boundaries, but they do not require it for wells permitted outside the boundaries. The, of course, all roads are connected to more roads in this world. So uh, yes, the haul routes do uh, exit uh, Elbert County and, and they have options to go uh, north primarily uh, to where uh, the market is and the infrastructure is. So um, these trucks do pass through Arapahoe County, but they have not um, requested that we enter into an agreement um, to cover those haul routes. Have you had any discussions with uh, Arapahoe County or offered the same concessions that you did with Elbert County, which is to inform uh, folks within a quarter mile of the haul routes? Understanding, I mean, there's a limit to it, right? Because I do hear you that roads connect to roads to connect to roads. <clears throat> However, I mean, I think, you know, I, I imagine you're anticipating final destination for these. So you have a pretty good idea <clears throat> of what types of areas may be most impacted by your haul routes uh, in the proximate local government. And so is there any thought about providing that kind of notice in Arapahoe County as well as Elbert County? Very good question again, Commissioner Messner. Uh, we've had that discussion with the county. Uh, they have not requested that we make that notice along any haul routes that uh, that lie within Arapahoe County. Um, there are more that there, there are more than one option for um, a driver to, to uh, take once they exit Elbert County. Uh, but the, the most logical choice would be Brick Center Road. That's a major road that uh, Rappo County has upgraded and widened recently, uh, which sees traffic from every direction uh, passing through Arapaho County. So um, providing notice to folks along that route. Um, is possible, but might actually be, be misleading. Um, I don't, I'm not aware of any other user of that road that would notify residents along it of traffic. Um, and I can, I can assure you that we would not, our traffic would not be the only traffic on that road. Okay, I think at this point, that's the questions that I have. Thank you. Commissioner Cross. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the questions. Um, I, I'd first like to go into a little bit more um, detail on, on Commissioner McGowan's questions regarding kind of the, the existing development. I believe you said that your initial horizontal wells were drilled 15 months ago. Is that correct? Um, our, the first well that GMT drilled in Elbert County was called the Vulcan 1HN and was drilled in um, the fall of 2021, so approximately 15 months ago. Okay. And where is the Vulcan compared to, to this proposed development? The Vulcan lies in a drill space unit established approximately one mile to the south of the ragged drill space unit. It's adjacent and to the south. Okay. Is that also being drilled east-west? Correct. Okay. Um, and are, with respect to some of the exploratory, are you doing any kind of different drilling pattern south versus east-west or, or anything like that? Or is it all pretty much adjacent? drilling and spacing units and, and similar drilling patterns? Uh, good question, Commissioner Cross. Uh, so we do have a mix of uh, east-west wells and north-south wells. Um, those do provide different data on the reservoir. Uh, however, the, I, would, I would say the primary driver uh, for that design would be driven more by surface location availability that meets all of the COGCC setback requirements uh, and, and the work it takes to put together a viable development plan for uh, an area that, you know, of course, we're not, we're not operating in, um, in open space here. We've got existing land use and ownership uh, issues to address through our design as well. Uh, but, uh, but yes, we, have, uh, we do have some east-west wells. We have some north-south wells and comparing the performance of those uh, and trying to filter out any difference that we might see in um, rock properties from uh, one area to another uh, is part of the work that we do to, to assess this uh, development. Um, and, and I'm sorry if you did answer this before, I just, I don't know if I heard it. How, how production? 
I apologize that your question, you cut out a little on your question. I, I, I'm sorry, and, and I'm sorry if you answered this before, I don't believe I heard it, but how is the Vulcan wall doing in terms of? Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm happy to share a little. I may tap uh, one of the other panelists to share a little more on production details, but in general, we saw very good results uh, with the initial well, the Vulcan 1H. Uh, we were pleased with those results, um, and having a pipeline connection was uh, was critical to to actually uh, producing that well effectively. Uh, the well was drilled in October of 21. The pipeline was not able to we were not able to put that pipeline in service until June of 22. So even a shorter time frame, roughly nine months ago, um, we had the Vulcan well shut in after the initial pr production test. So since June of 22, we've been producing into the pipeline. We drilled four additional wells in 22, uh, further to the south and west of the Vulcan site. Um, we, the pipeline connection we were able to secure for, for all of these wells um, has a limited capacity. Um, and we are working on solving some of those issues as well, which, uh, which is uh, essential for, for more development in this area. Um, but uh, generally, we see results that encourage us to continue to drill, and that's why we have a, a capital program for 2023. And, and just for clarification, is um, the pipeline you're referring to there is a, is a gas takeaway um, pipeline, correct? Not not the oil takeaway. That's correct. Tenderfoot pipeline is a, a, a steel gas line um, exporting from Elbert County to the north, uh, tying into. Um, another pipeline system that was uh, available to us and in the ground. And this is the same pipeline system that you would be using for the for the ragged? Correct. Okay. And to get an understanding is, as you've kind of talked about some planning and some thinking ahead, if this is successful with respect to potential produced water takeaway, oil takeaway, et cetera, um, where is the, how far away is the existing infrastructure takeaway? Uh, I, I apologize for, for some reason your questions are cutting out. I think you asked how far away is existing infrastructure to our development and um, you know physical infrastructure uh, for oil takeaway is approximately eight miles uh, to the nearest oil pipeline that I'm aware of. Uh, whether or not that oil pipeline is available to us um, and has capacity is a completely different question. Uh, so to, to get to that point, we're, we're looking at a much larger distance. Um, and, uh, you know, some of these problems may be solved with uh, negotiations and others solved with um, construction. And we're looking at both solutions. Have you started having conversations with the existing infrastructure owners? Uh, yeah, for that question, I think I'll pass it to our land manager, Mr. Schuster. Yeah, thanks, Max. Um, we're continuously evaluating our options here. Um, you know, I think Max mentioned with our affiliate company, Tenderfoot Pipeline, um, we have, we have obtained multi-line rights, um, coming, starting in Adams County, all the way down to our last pad, um, in anticipation of potentially installing an oil pipeline in the future. Um, that capital commitment needs to be backed by, um, like Max said earlier, um, repeatable, um, results from our well pads. Um, our neighbor uh, in the area that does operate a oil line, uh, we have conversations with them all the time. Sometimes our plans do not align succinctly, um, you know, but we're in hopes that we can either one, install some sort of oil takeaway that will remove the trucks from the Elver County communities, whether that be to a battery type oil offloading facility or taking it all the way up to a fire for the market, um, time will tell. And so the, that those are our plans. Um, you know, a lot of those conversations are confidential. Um, so um, we we would love to have an oil line, I'll put it that way. Um, it makes our lives better, everyone's lives better. Um, but at this time, the investment and the commitment is just, it's uncertain, so. Perfect, thank you. And then the one other thing that I wanted to ask about in terms of kind of future planning and exploration, um, you, you talked about your 2023 drilling schedule. Do you have further exploratory 2024 drilling schedule or is it kind of based off of the Vulcan, based off the cinnamon and based off the ragged? This is really going to establish what we're doing um, or is there 
further area to the north, further area to the east, kind of kind of thinking ahead so you know where I'm going with this question is, um, is this potentially going to become more of a comprehensive area plan type situation, or is this something that this these are kind of the land you're doing and we'll kind of move from there? Uh, Commissioner Cross, I appreciate the question. Uh, I think I will ask uh, Mr. Schuster to, to respond to that one. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're always evaluating our drill schedule. Um, you know, we build capital models all the time internally here on, you know, based on success and strip rates, um, uh, you know, commodity pricing. You know, the intent is to continue to work our way through the pad or through the field um, afraid, you know, we're, we're drilling the Vulcan pad as we speak. Um, we plan to move to this ragged pad later this year. Um, the commitment to drill pad wells on any of the other locations that we have approved in Elbert County is expressly dependent on the results of these two pads. Um, and so we're constantly evaluating that. Um, you know, like we said, the Vulcan well, uh, the first well in the area, um, we like the results. We like them enough to move down to the next five or next four locations in the Southwest. Those wells were drilled at a different orientation. They had a lot more pipeline to build to them. We had some operational issues with them. So it, they didn't match up with the Vulcan per se. So, you know, there, there's constantly a reevaluation on, you know, where you deploy capital the scheduling, the timing, um, and that also builds into, you know, other infrastructure availability, you know, water availability, so on and so forth. So um, if we had our way, we would move through the field in a very methodic, you know, we're going to drill this pad this month, this pad that month, but we, we need to take a step back every now and then and look at the money we're spending and the results we're getting prior to really committing to the full field development. Um, and then I think my last couple of questions, I want to talk about the operations um, aspect of it a little bit. Um, you mentioned that it's going to be drilled by a diesel rig. Is this a tier two diesel rig, tier four engine? What kind of what kind of diesel rig are you going to be using? Uh, Commissioner Cross, I don't know the answer to that question. We may have a panelist on that uh, that can respond. Um, but uh, it, it it will they will be diesel powered uh, with a generator on site. Diesel powered generators to run the electric rig. Uh, the reason for that is that there is no other electrical infrastructure in the area that would support a, a full electric rig. Um, uh, but as far as the uh, rating, the EPA rating on the generators, I don't have that information at this time. Was there any discussion with respect to? Um, mixed flu mixed fuel like a part diesel part natural gas anything like that or or was it kind of diesel from the get go? Uh, great question again, Commissioner Cross. I may ask uh, another panelist to to speak to that um, if uh, if Trevor Smith can uh, jump on. I think he might have a little more information to share regarding our. Uh, our discussions with the rig contractor. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question real quick? So going on the use of a diesel engine, I wasn't sure, obviously understanding some of the infrastructure difficulties in, in electrifying, but was there discussion of using a natural gas rig or a mixed fuel or anything like that, or, or was it kind of a diesel rig from the get-go? Well, we've used diesel rigs from the get go, and um, the the long and the short of it is the the infrastructure isn't in place as of right now to to commit to a uh, electrification of the drilling rig. So um, we've landed on on tier three um, diesel generated uh, generators. So, okay. Commissioner Cross, if I may just jump in real quick, um, Trevor, sure. could you please put your full name and your title for GMT just on the record? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll type it in. My name is Trevor Smith. I'm the uh, operations petroleum engineer for GMT. Excellent, thank you. Sorry, Commissioner Cross. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate the, the clarification there. That's good for the record. Um, and then the other was the, the drilling mud. Um, was there a reason that you did tier two mud instead of going with a, a, a higher class mud? 
Yeah, so I can answer that as well. Um, GMT landed on a category two drilling mud, um, which has low aromatic, good qualities for uh, drilling the well quickly. Um, we also utilize uh, odor neutralizers in the mud itself. Um, so we haven't had much issue with um, low levels of aromatics. Um, it's very similar to a cat two. I think the, the delta there is about four to five percent in terms of um, differences in aromatic levels. Um, the category two base fluids also have um, trace amounts of BTEX, which are carcinogens within the mud. So it's safer for uh, the hands and personnel on site to handle and use on a daily basis. Um, and we've drilled, I think, uh, the past nine wells that we've had with this uh, Based to our category two um, distillate based fluid, and we haven't had any complaints with aromatics as, as of yet. So, okay. I think those are my only questions for now, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you. I just have a few questions that haven't yet been answered, and they're along the same thread lines that have been asked by my fellow commissioners. And so I appreciate uh, all of those questions. Um, with regard to the trucking, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I note that daily trucking is the plan and uh, talking about produced water and oil. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Is that uh, intended to diminish over time as produced water diminishes? Is daily trucking necessary? Is there a plan that can allow you to come in, you know, uh, once a week? Uh, just talk a little bit about why daily. Uh, yes, Commissioner Ackerman, I'll address that question. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the daily trucking for these fluids is uh, necessary essentially due to storage volumes that are being constructed on site. Um, you know, there are emissions requirements that need to be met uh, with our uh, state permitting uh, and tank emissions are part of our modeling and calculations. So we can only uh, construct um, a certain number of tanks, a certain amount of volume, uh, storage volume on site to comply with all of the um, other requirements. So um, the, the daily production, especially initial production, um, is expected to require daily visits from both oil and water trucks. We absolutely uh, expect and, and uh, have seen from other, other wells we've developed in the area to see those numbers decline over time. But the, the decline curve of these wells uh, is still being assessed. It's another element of our appraisal of this field um, to determine um, how our um, drilling and completion techniques, flowback and production techniques impact uh, ultimate the, the fluid volume production from these wells and the, de the decline curve. So we'd like to, um, you know, optimize that curve to the best of our ability, uh, but we will see it decline over time without question. Thank you for addressing that, Mr. Blair. Um, I did want to just make a comment associated with uh, Commissioner McGowan's lead comments on the kind of the wildcatting. And uh, I, I certainly do understand the necess necessity of, you know, establishing baseline data. Um, and just from my perspective, and I think this is what I heard from Commissioner McGowan as well, I wanted to reiterate that, that there's a balance there that I, I certainly have concerns about. At what point has this been properly wildcatted out or do we need to keep drilling one well, you know, here, one well there, one well here, one well there? I would encourage the operator to get all of the data that they can get from the wells that they've drilled, um, you know, moving forward before uh, expanding operations into other OGDPs. That, that would be a preference from me. Um, I, I also wanted to address, and I appreciate a, a couple of commissioners addressing the multiple mobilizations. I, I also have concerns about that. And, and again, understand the necessity of it. So thank you for addressing that. I, I heard, I believe from Mr. Schuster that the intent would be to, you know, drill the exploratory wells on a pad and then come back and mobilize again and drill the remainder of those wells. And I wondered if you would be amenable to a, a COA, a condition of approval on this pad that, that, that solidifies that if you're gonna come back in that it won't be one, two at a time, but it will be to uh, completion of the pad. You know, I'm, I'm not sure I can commit to the company to that today. Um, I, I will tell you um, in response to your, your previous comment, um, 
the way that our capital model and our drilling schedule is is constructed. Um, the idea has been and will be, you know, the Vulcan is a pad test. The Ragged will be a pad test. It's our money is better spent drilling pad wells. And our time is better spent drilling pad wells. We are way more efficient drilling pad wells. Um, as we move through the field, we do not intend to drill really one-off situations any longer. Um, you know, that being said, committing to coming back um, and only drill and drilling the rest of the pad out, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to get approval from my superiors to do that to tell you the truth. So um, I, I'm not comfortable committing to that today. Thank you. I understand that, Mr. Schuster, and uh, just would like to uh, to notify you all that I, I'll have significant concerns with incremental um, multiple mobilizations uh, on a pad if, if it does come to that. Uh, and then just to, to further explore another avenue that's come up a number of times, I, I'm still a little unclear on what communications have taken place with Arapahoe County, the proximate local government, and uh, you know their comfort level with the uh, with the uh, with the project, and so can you can you expand a little bit what communications have taken place, and have they expressed comfort with the with the project and with its with its traffic? Are they aware of it? Is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, Commissioner Ackerman, I'm thank you for the question. I'll address that one. Uh, I'll say first and foremost, we've complied with all COGCC rules by notifying Arapahoe County at the appropriate time with the appropriate written notification for the proximate local government. Beyond that, I speak with their LGD and others in their planning department uh, on practically a, a daily basis, if not uh, if not more like weekly, but uh, we have a very good working relationship. They're fully aware of our uh, activity in the area, our development plans, not just what's on paper, but what's uh, you know pending. Um, we, as, I, as we've talked about, there is a gas pipeline, tenderfoot pipeline that was constructed uh, to export gas from uh, from Elbert County through Arapahoe County. So there's uh, uh, an approved application for that and traffic was assessed for the pipeline construction and operations. And there is a uh, pending application that extends that gas pipeline further uh, that's, that's on the books with Arapahoe County today. Uh, with regard to the ragged specifically, the haul, as I mentioned, the haul route was uh, shared with Arapahoe County. And according to their policies, as uh, as presented to me, at least, uh, they do not require agreements for operators uh, with pad sites outside of their boundaries. If we were to permit a well pad within Arapahoe County, then they have in place rules to require uh, road impact fees um, and uh, an agreement uh, to monitor the condition of those roads, I believe. But uh, given the fact that this pad is located outside of the county boundaries, they don't claim any uh, jurisdiction or require any agreements to be made. Thanks for expounding on that, Mr. Blair. I really appreciate that. And just one clarification on a point you just made. You, you said, uh, as was explained to you, they don't require anything further. Was that explanation from Arapahoe County? Yes, of course. I, I just want to say that, you know, I... It's that's my understanding of their policies. I, I don't have them memorized, but uh, uh, but that was the communication that took place. That reflects discussions between you and the county. Appreciate Correct. it. Correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, no further comments or questions, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Cross. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I apologize. I just wanted to ask one uh, clarification question. On slide eight um, of your presentation, you notice it says that completion will take place in September of 2023 and production in January 2024, but I believe you testified that it would be completions in August of 2023 and production in October of 2023. Um, and so just to clarify, I just wanted to make sure that I understood that as well. Uh, yes, Commissioner Cross, thank you for that question. And I do apologize, it appears we have a slight discrepancy between our slides and, and our notes, and uh, I do apologize for that. Um, quite frankly, you know, the, the, these operations will essentially occur um, sequentially uh, to the best of our ability. And, and I would rather provide you quarters than months, to be honest, because, uh, you know, scheduling crews and, 
ensuring that we have a rig uh, scheduled to arrive as soon as the pad is constructed, but no sooner, not before the pad is construct constructed, for example, uh, is our goal here. So um, yes, I do see that discrepancy. I do apologize for it, uh, but um, I believe that uh, um, late, let's say late August, early September is the timeline for completions. And, um, you know, I, we will, we will pursue these operations uh, sequentially once once we begin the work and um, conduct them with all expediency. Thank you. Further questions for the panel? All right, seeing no further questions, uh, we move to deliberations. Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have much to say other than what I've said already, but, um, you know, uh, Exploration into a new field does require a certain type of, uh, of of leniency moving forward, so that we can properly determine what uh, what is there. And I think this company's done a good job of explaining that. And I, I agree with that philosophy. And as I stated during my questioning, I, I do think it's important to take that representative sample, gather all the data that we can gather, and determine the state of the field as much as we can determine before moving forward with you know, geographic expansion of uh, more and more one well uh, or, or, or two well sites. Um, I, I have some concerns associated with that. Uh, you know, I'm not a petroleum engineer, but, uh, you know, some some production curve concerns with how much of that's going to be easy early production that that it, that, uh, you know, will then allow folks to move on to more early easy production in a new location. I certainly have concerns with multiple mobilizations, I have concerns with potentially tying up and leaving latent certain uh, uh, royalty uh, rights and mineral rights. And so I do think that there are concerns associated with continued expansion without further determining the, the status as best we can of each site. Um, so that's just a comment that I have and the reason for some of the questions that I asked. That said, again, I wanted to reiterate that I do understand the necessity of having to to explore and gather uh, that data. So, um, you know, going forward, I certainly, I do support uh, this application and I, I will keep an eye on uh, kind of how we progress with regard to the gathering analysis of data associated with this field. Appreciate uh, the, the exploratory nature of this company and the risk that they're taking and the work that they're doing uh, in this field. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ackerman. Uh, I'm in agreement. Uh, I note that the relevant local government is supportive. I note the director's recommendation is supportive. Uh, I do not find any of our regulations that are not being met um, with regard to this, and I would be in approval of the application. Further deliberations? Commissioner Messner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also agree that this is an approvable application. Um, I would note for the record that um, any two A's that are associated with this past the initial six that are being proposed, um, I would request that staff evaluate those and uh, uh, as necessary, kick them up to the commission for review to um, ensure that we are evaluating this um, as the applicant has indicated, that it is going to be in two um, in two occupations of the pad um, versus uh, an extended period. As we approve applications like this, we, we really are, are granting an open-ended um, OGDP application if they are not intending on drilling the entirety of the application. Uh, in one occupation. And so that makes me uncomfortable because the open-ended nature of this, particularly in the area that it's in, while I acknowledge that currently it's rural, um, there is nothing saying that 10 or 15 years from now uh, that this would be something different than it is today. Uh, and so I think that the tool that we have available uh, in order to evaluate that is the, is the form twos. And so I would ask that the form twos um, be evaluated by staff um, as they do already based on situations on the ground <clears throat> and that as necessary uh, for evaluation get kicked up to the commission 
uh, should staff determine that um, something is occurring on the ground that is significantly different than what we see there today and or there's continual proposals for multiple occupations of this particular site. Commissioner Cross. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I just like to, to reiterate Commissioner Ackerman's comments. I, I, I also think this is approvable. It meets all of our rules and regulations. Um, and with this being more of an exploratory area, I, I understand that it is close to existing operations, um, but it's far enough away for, for it to be a little bit different. And so I think as they try and for lack of a better term, drill down on exactly what's necessary for operations, what's necessary for completion techniques, et cetera. Um, I, I think I think this is this is very appropriate. Um, and I'll be interested in the future to see what kind of applications we get um, with once they start to work in additional takeaways, both water, oil, et cetera. So further deliberations. Do we have a motion? Commissioner Cross? I move for approval of the application. Second. Further discussion on the motion? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you to the panel. We appreciate the presentation and we will look forward to hearing from you as the development progresses. Great, thank you, Chair. Thank you, everyone. Chair, yeah, thank you, Commissioners. All right, um, I am looking at our agenda and I do not see anything else on the agenda. Does any commissioner have anything else? Seeing none, I believe we would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.